Dexter half century in an even contest at Cheltenham. Gloucestershire are looking to turn things around after successive defeats to Glamorgan and Middlesex, but despite those losses, they lie just 22 points behind Derbyshire, who occupy the third promotion position in the table. Bottom club Leicestershire are their championship opponents at Cheltenham. The Foxes head into the game on the back of their first defeat in five after losing out to Durham at the Fisher County ground last week. Leicestershire won the toss and elected to bat first. They didn't get off to the best of starts, as in the second over they lost their first wicket, Bamba bowling to Hassan Azad and the batsman caught behind for one run. Horton and Dexter would settle in well though to help Leicestershire after that early wicket. Both players hitting boundaries and even a five was scored off one ball in the seventh over. Horton in particular was showcasing his attacking intent as he moved through the gears and found successive boundaries off the bowling of Sayers in the ninth over. He would do the same again in the 14th over, this time off the bowling of Matt Taylor. But as Horton closed in on his half century, he was out. Gone for 47, Taylor the bowler trapping him LBW. Shame for him as he was looking in good nick. New batsman Ackerman along with Dexter would bat through until lunch with the score at 92 for 2, a decent morning for the batting side. Shortly after lunch, Leicestershire would move past the 100 mark with Dexter and Ackerman looking well set. The third wicket would fall as Ackerman was caught for 21 runs, the catch by Van Buren off the bowling of Taylor. Dearden was the fourth wicket down as he was bowled by Higgins for seven. Ben Mike wouldn't last long as he was gone for seven runs, Howell picking up his first wicket of the innings. And shortly after reaching his 50, Dexter was gone, caught by Hammond off the bowling of Sayers for 56, Leicestershire six down on day one. Swindles and Parkinson would steer the innings to tee with a score at 168 for six. And this pairing would showcase their resilience in the evening as they moved the score up towards the 200 mark with some solid batting. That was until the 79th over when Taylor trapped Parkinson LBW. Out for 19 runs, Leicestershire 197 for 7. Wrights joined Swindles in the middle with Leicestershire hoping they would be able to bat through the day and then add some more runs in the morning. Wrights was being aggressive as he hit three boundaries in the space of four overs. But after that, Swindles was gone. Out for 32 runs, LBW off the bowling of Higgins who claimed his second wicket of the innings. But Wright was to go before the end of the day, bowled by Bamba who claimed his second wicket, Wright out for 30 to leave Leicestershire 9 down. And the last wicket would fall as once again Bamba did the damage, Mohamed Abbas out for just 3 runs and with that Stumps was called, Leicestershire all out for 252, the reply from Gloucestershire will start tomorrow morning. Captain Dent hits brilliant ton as Gloucestershire take the lead in Cheltenham. Gloucestershire bowled Leicestershire out on day one at Cheltenham for 252 runs. The visitors won the toss and decided to bat, with Dexter top scoring after making a valuable 56 runs. Day two would begin with Gloucestershire looking to reply with a big total. The plan for the hosts would be to bat all day. But the day started badly for Gloucestershire, with Mohamed Abbas finding the first wicket of the day in the very first over of the day. Hammond out for a duck, caught by Ackerman. Roderick and Dent would steady the ship after the early setback with some resolute batting and the odd boundary thrown in for good measure. But in the 16th over, a run out would halt their progress. Roderick gone for 22, not what Gloucestershire were looking for. Two wickets lost this morning. Tom Smith would join Chris Dent in the middle and it was patient batting from the pair. Dent was closing in on his half century while Smith was very much playing a defensive role. Dent reached his 50 just before lunch, making it to the milestone off 95 balls, six fours in the process, Dent continuing his fine form. Lunch arrived at Cheltenham without any further wickets falling. The score 83 for two, Dent on 50 and his partner Smith on seven after batting for an hour. In the afternoon session, Dent would fire Ben Mike to the boundary twice in one over to keep the score ticking along. Runs weren't coming too quickly, but these two were looking solid, and before too long they were celebrating their 100 partnership. Gloucestershire passed the 150 mark now as they look to respond to the 252 set by Leicestershire. 
these two really were starting to frustrate the Leicestershire attack as they continued to look unruffled and Smith was starting to fire the ball to the ropes too. T was reached with these two still at the crease. 174 for two the score, Dent on 96 not out, Smith unbeaten for a resolute 44. Both players will be looking to reach their milestones in the evening session. And it was Tom Smith who reached his half-century first, his watchful 50 coming off 155 balls and over three hours out in the middle. And shortly after that, celebrations at the other end too, with captain Chris Dent reaching a wonderful century and his second century against Leicestershire in 2019. This partnership growing all the time as they would move past the 200 mark, both Smith and Dent upping the pace with some blows to the boundary ropes. This pairing closing in on the 250 mark for Gloucestershire, but just a few runs short of that, Captain Dent would depart. Breakthrough for Leicestershire finally, as Wright claimed his first wicket of the innings, caught by Swindles. Fantastic knock of 125 comes to a close for the skipper. Tom Smith would go soon after as Chris Wright produced a brilliant over of bowling to claim a double wicket maiden. First Smith was gone for 84 and then a few balls later Van Buren out for a duck, caught by Ackerman. A flurry of wickets falling. Higgins and Taylor would be looking to steer the batting team through to stumps but before the close of play Leicestershire would strike again, this time Davies bowling Higgins for 14. And a little after that stumps was called. Gloucestershire producing some excellent batting today as they move into the lead in this contest, but some vital late wickets for Leicestershire on day two have very much kept their hopes alive and kicking in this one. A fascinating day to come tomorrow. Howell and Taylor back Gloucestershire to commanding lead. Captain Chris Dent made a brilliant century on day two to take Gloucestershire into the lead in an attritional match at Cheltenham College. Visitors Leicestershire would need to take a handful of wickets early on day three to limit the lead the hosts were slowly building. Day three began in a familiarly cautious fashion for Gloucestershire, slowly finding their batting range as the morning progressed. But when Taylor found the rope off a bass and after Howell had done the same, they picked up the pace, taking two fours in each of two consecutive Parkinson overs. It was this flurry of runs that took Jack Taylor to 50, an impressive half-century coming off 93 balls. With his 50 reached, the game went back to its placid tempo, the pair of Taylor and Howell hitting the bad balls as they came and making it safely to lunch. It was Gloucestershire's session and they now sat on a 135-run lead in the match with four first-inning wickets still in hand. More careful cricket after the break on a wicket that clearly favoured the entrenched pair. Fours came sparingly, with Howell and Taylor accumulating consistent runs through singles and doubles. It would be Howell who reached his milestone first, a four-off Mike taking him to the total, the fourth 50 of Gloucestershire's innings, coming off 116 balls. A few overs later, and with six runs from a right over, Taylor had made his way to 99. But that's where he'd agonisingly fall, dismissed one shy of his century, bowled by Davis. Howell then took the more aggressive role his departed partner had left him, attacking a bass and getting two fours off three balls. But in the very next over he was gone, Davis the man again, this time trapping Howell in front for 76. New bats came out swinging, and the run rate nearly doubled with the two at the crease as they sought to extend Gloucestershire's already mightily impressive lead. And as Bamba charged down the wicket seeking more swift runs, he was duly stumped by keeper Swindles, out for 15. That was enough for Captain Dent, who declared and brought about an early tee. A fantastic couple of sessions for Gloucestershire saw them to exactly double Leicestershire's first innings total. The visitors would now have to negotiate a tricky evening session and back their way to parity as soon as possible if they wanted any hope of victory. But just as important as run building was keeping top order wickets intact and a watchful start from opening pair Horton and Azad ensured that runs came without cost. Horton moved past 25 with a four off Higgins. 
but the bowler had his revenge the very next ball, trapping the opener LBW and sending him back to the pavilion for 26. Dexter was the new man in and he struggled to get strike, but when he did, he was gone, out for a seven ball duck, having been at the wicket for just 18 minutes. These wickets knocked the stuffing out the visitors, unable to pick up runs at any sort of pace and seemingly desperate for the safety of stumps. And after a rain delay, umpires called time, Leicestershire 73 for 2 and needing an impressive batting performance on day 4 to have any chance of taking this game beyond a draw. Day 3 was very much Gloucestershire's at Cheltenham, with the home side taking a first innings lead of 252 thanks to the middle order efforts of Howell and Taylor. And with Leicestershire wobbling and losing two wickets in the evening session, Gloucestershire have all but secured a draw and will hope for early wickets in the pursuit of victory. Smith got the visitors off to a confident start with a four in the morning's first over, and Leicestershire were making the start they would have wanted, their central focus being the maintenance of wickets, at least until parity was reached on the scoreboard. And with the pair now set, they picked up the pace, a pair of fours coming from each batsman, firstly off Smith, and then off Higgins. With a couple more boundaries, the pair made their way safely to the lunch period. It was Leicestershire's session, with no wickets lost, and the deficit cut by 96 runs. They now required just 84 more to level with the hosts. But the afternoon got off to the worst possible start, as Ackerman, who sat on 41 at the break, nicked the second ball of the afternoon behind to Roderick off Taylor. New bat did and made a steady start with fours off Taylor. Azad got in on the action too as he approached his century, which he reached six overs later, the important ton coming in 257 balls and is his third century against Gloucestershire this season. It was once again cautious cricket at Cheltenham with runs coming sparingly. And this bowling pressure told as Dearden's middle stump went cartwheeling away off the bowling of Higgins, gone for 19, and Leicestershire were down four. Mike came in and after 11 dot balls drove Higgins into the onside to get off the mark with four. And this new pair chipped away at the Gloucestershire lead until a Mike four off Bamba took the sides level. They reached T safely, now leading by three in the match and with a couple of settled batsmen at the crease pair had faced a cumulative 350 balls between them. But the break clearly halted Azad's rhythm as the first ball back he misjudged and mistimed a Bamba delivery and prodded it to Hammond at slip, a fantastic innings over, out for 121. Gloucestershire's chance at victory would require more quick wickets and it took just four more overs for the next to come, this time Mike gone for 14, scored over an hour and a half at the crease. But Swindles couldn't hang on, dismissed by Higgins for 12. And Higgins had his five for just seven balls later before Sayers clean bowled right, out for two. So Leicestershire all out for 299, leaving Gloucestershire just eight overs to make 48 runs for victory. Dent was the first to pick up boundaries, pulling four off right. But the bowler had his revenge just two balls later when he bowled him through the gate. The boundaries Gloucestershire needed for victory weren't coming and when Hammond was caught out for 12, the wind seemed to be slipping away from the hosts. The margin had narrowed to 15 when Taylor tried for a big shot and was caught in the deep by Dearden. A Higgins 6 made their final over interesting, just 9 runs needed for victory. And the drama intensified as in the Ferrari, a simple single turned into a dodgy double and Howell was run out for one. But after a quick two, Roderick launched a six over point and the game was won. Gloucestershire deserved winners, having dominated over the four days with bat and with ball. It was an excellent advertisement for the county championship, an exciting finale, 23 wickets and more than a thousand runs scored. Gloucestershire will pick up 24 points, whilst Leicestershire take just five. Oh,